Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of Tig Time. Hi, I'm Mr. Tig, and I'm doing a, a two-part series of, of how to repair this particular part. It happens to be an engine mount coming off an aircraft, and it's like an experimental aircraft. This happens an awful lot where you get cracks or voids or things like that. And in part one of this, this engine mount was powder coated. Okay, now the problem with powder coating is it covers up all the sins. So if anybody welded it and there's cracks, and pinholes, non-welds, non-fusion of welds, it covers it up. So what we did is we fixed some visual cracks, and you saw that in part one, and we drilled a little, uh, a little pressure relief hole because we were going to be welding for a considerable amount of time, and the air inside builds up pressure and tries to blow out. So that's why we drill that hole, and then we let the part cool off, and then we very quickly fill that hole. Okay, so now the owner of the aircraft says, you know, I probably need to really inspect this a lot better. So he did. He, uh, he stripped it down to bare metal and uh, saw that the powder coating covered up all kinds of crazy things. And there, there's, I mean, there's places here that aren't welded. Little things, there's some pinholes, but uh, we're going to fix every one of them. There's probably nine or ten little defects in here. Now, the one thing uh, I noticed is that this, this particular part it looked like most of it, if not all of it, was MIG welded. Now, part of the problem with MIG welding is that you don't have real fine control, nor do you have fine control to do wraparounds, and almost all of these are wraparound issues. If you want to get into this little tight area right here, it's almost impossible to get in with a MIG gun and make it look good. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to fix all the sins and all the holes and all the, all the pinholes and uh, lack of fusion. Uh, it's not going to take a long time, but this thing has been primered. So we did a wire brush to get the primer off. You know, we're going to we're going to use ER ADS D2 filler, and because this is pretty thin wall material, the diameter of this filler is only going to be 0.035. Uh, so if you try to use 0.62 or anything heavy like that, man, all you're going to do is burn holes because you're trying to get this rod to melt, and that's not what you want. You want a puddle started and then dab. So I'm going to get all my gear on and we're going to fix and repair all of this and uh, we'll show you the end result shortly. Okay, now I repaired probably nine or ten spots on here. Everywhere that I could see pinholes or non-fusion or somewhere that I just didn't think the well looked strong, I went ahead and, uh, and repaired it. And with the primer on here, what will happen a lot of times, even though you clean it off, uh, it will start smoking a little bit. So just stop, take a little wire brush, and it will brush off pretty easy after that. Um, I wiped it down with acetone. Actually, it wasn't acetone at all. I used these little handy wipes, isopropyl alcohol. Um, and it did a really good job. And you can see all kinds of burn marks on here. So uh, this thing's going to have to be probably restripped or sandblasted or something and, uh, and then uh, you know, reprimed, repainted. So uh, I used a 1 uh, pointed tungsten DC. Most of the welding was done in less than, than 40 amps, so pretty normal for aircraft type components. So uh, this is going to go back to its owner in, uh, in Florida. We'll ship it tomorrow, and uh, thank you for watching us on TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.